You're listening to Ask When, the podcast. Folks from all walks of life talk about their daily hustle and bustle, living and celebrating life, sharing tips on becoming champions, especially for those who are muscling, mental, and physical disabilities. Ask When, the podcast with your host, who has mustered over 30 years living with cerebral palsy and going strong, author and cerebral palsy advocate, Wynn Charles. Ask when the podcast starts right now. Welcome to Ask When, everyone. Today I have Miss Sevilla Morgan. And if I have a Van Gogh moment, don't mind me. I have been listening to Sevilla on and off for years now. And um, I love the concept of her podcast, Childless Not by Choice. As you guys know, before I became gay, I um, made the decision not to have kids because my body can't handle it. It literally can't. So with that being said, I'm going to let Sevilla take it away and explain what she does and the concept of her podcast. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show. I do appreciate it. I just got blown away just now when you just said that you've been listening to this podcast for years. And um, the podcast is about to be five years old in July. So it's amazing. And this is to any podcaster out there. You never know who's listening. And we just have to keep on keeping on because we just never know who's live, you know, we're touching. So thank you so much. You just really made me fan out. (laughs) Oh, you're welcome for that. Yeah. So basically, I, for about 10 years, I tried to hang on to my body as far as the part of a woman's body that carries a child, the uterus, and for 10 years, it rejected the entire idea of me ever carrying a child. I had fibroids like nobody's business. I had um, three, three myomectomies, and then I eventually had a hysterectomy. And a myomectomy is just, I shouldn't say just, it's major surgery. But a myomectomy is where they go in and take out the fibroids. And the first myomectomy I had, they took 27 fibroids out. And then they said, now hurry up and go have that child. And I thought to myself, with whom? (laughs) Because I just couldn't meet the right guy. And uh, it just never happened. So after three of those surgeries, one of those three was by robot. And that was a waste of time and money because after four hours they brought me back out and said we never even got to the fibroids we just had so much scar tissue to deal with we thought after four hours we should just stop so that was i think the most heartbreaking of all the surgeries that i had when they told me they did nothing (laughs) they got to nothing and then they put me in the maternity ward for a day or two and that was lovely and uh then Maybe a year later, a few months later, I opted to just have the hysterectomy. I couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't take the pain. Couldn't take the accidents every month. I just I couldn't deal with it. And then after the hysterectomy, which was in 2011, I, I was fine, uh, okay, leading up to it. And after a few weeks after, I just started to go downhill mentally and emotionally, and had to seek therapy. And that's another thing I talk about on my podcast quite a bit seeking therapy. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. Just do it. And uh, after that, um, well, when did I start? The, the, the platform started, was it around then? Five years ago from now is when my platform started. And I thought, I couldn't be the only person dealing with this. There are 7 billion people on this planet, half are women, and some percentage of them, um, we now know about 20%, will not have a child and it's just it's not just me we feel like it when we're going through these things like it's just us but it couldn't be and so that's when i opted to start the platform and that's where we are now just 
continuing on. I'm at episode one. Eight, this month's episode is 118, and I've heard from women all over the, the world. The first woman I heard from was a woman in Australia, which was really, really cool to know somebody heard my voice from here in Florida over in Australia. So it's the rest, as they say, is history. I'm just keeping, keeping on. <laughs> So you um, decided to do this podcast because you knew it was your own personal experience slash a big niche. Well, I don't even think I thought it was a big niche, and I, and I still don't think it's big. I think, and you just proved my point, there are a lot of people listening, and I think Someone in the podcasting arena has said it, that there are going to be people who will never reach out to you. They'll never reach out. No matter how much you beg for people to, to, to join the conversation, to reach out, they're never going to do it. And especially in this genre, they're not going to do it. So, yes, numbers-wise, it's a big number when you compare 20% of, of 3.5 billion because that's half of the 7 billion that are on the planet, but there's they, they can listen, but they're not going to. They're not going to reach out, and I don't know. Maybe big niche is relative. So maybe I'm not answering that question with the right mindset. But it's a niche, that's for sure. It's a definite niche, and mm-hmm. you're feeling it, and I'm feeling a big space of cerebral palsy. Geez, when. It's so funny because when I typed in Sam Halsey way back when, um, <laughs> this was over, well, it's going to be 10 years in August, you guys. 10 years. Gee, peace. It's a little <laughs> scary. But when I typed in the niche of Sam Halsey podcast, absolutely nothing came up and mm. in iTunes at the time. Old iTunes. We're talking old terminology, you guys. Now they call it Apple Podcast. So mm-hmm. absolutely nothing came up in iTunes on my cell phone. And I'm like, bingo, that's going to be my niche. And so that's how I started this. But it's interesting. People will, some people will reach out, as is will not. You just have to keep on keeping on. Uh-huh. to impact those. And you have to be passionate about what you're doing, and I'm passionate about this. I am just, I mean, 118 episodes late, later, I'm still very passionate about this whole yeah. subject matter and reaching out to women like and men about this subject. Yeah, exactly. And so, Sevilla, if you had to move houses and um, only take five things with you, what would they be? Hmm. Well, I would take my Bible because I rely on that quite a bit. And I would take a pen and tons of paper because I want to write and I write old school. I don't type everything like we do these days. And would there be electricity at this new place? <laughs> Yes. Then I, w- I would take my, my laptop and my microphone so I could t- uh, keep talking. Is that fine? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, keep talking and pen and baby and Bible. I mean, mm-hmm. sounds good to me. Sounds, yeah. sounds good to me. And so, Savannah, so if your best friend was going to write a book about you, what would the title be? Tenacity. Tenacity. Uh huh. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Tenacity. Well, that's a strong word for book title. And so, what is your favorite book and what is the title? Well, um, I, I hate to sound cliche ish, but um, I, I do rely on the Bible quite a bit on my, as my reading material. And then uh, after that, I just like any any autobiography that I can get my hands on. I'm, I'm trying to right now. I'm trying to um, finish um, Michelle Obama's book, 
I haven't finished it yet. Is that an autobiography? But, you know, you know what I mean, biography, autobiography. I, yeah. I like to learn about other people's lives and how they got to where they are now. And I love history. So anything, anything related to history, I'm there as well. Yeah. And if you guys want to go check out Becoming by Michelle Obama, Lily, I know that um, Overdrive and Libby, L-I-B-B-Y, are the two sources that libraries are using now. Libraries use on a general basis, especially now since libraries are closed due to, we'll be recording this on April 12th, 2020, in the midst of a world pandemic. And so Michelle Obama's book is amazing. It's the last book I actually listened to on audio tape. I I started um, listening to it on May 18th, um, 2019, when I was going through, when I... Um, was going through the last stages of grief, um, accepting that my father was going to die. And I left him in Denver, Colorado. And the person who was driving me home said, okay, we, because she and I were both going through the same process. I mean, my stepdad and I were going through the same process, and she looks at me and says, "We need an inspirational book." And so, um, she and I started listening to becoming. I, I of course, um, finished it. But if you guys want to go um, listen to amazing autobiography, or read the amazing autobiography. Do it, do it, do it, because mm-hmm. Michelle Obama, um, and she could have got anyone to narrate her book, anyone, but she narrates it herself, and it's amazing. Mm. Yeah, that's a great and, book. Um, do it, do it, do it. Great book. And so, Sabella, so what is your morning routine? Hmm. My morning routine is uh, I try to get up on time, but uh, I tend to hit the snooze button because I'm a night owl. So I typically, it's a very, very bad habit. I'm not promoting it at all. But lately, my typical bedtime is around 12.30 a.m. But lately, I I know it's bad. (laughs) You're not promoting 12.30 a.m. No. I I mean, it, it would be bad enough, but... I I find myself going to bed at one thirty these days because I have a second podcast now on top of everything else I have going on. But I typically wake up around, now that I'm working from home, I wake up around 8. Um, when I don't work from home, I have to be up by 7. And so I do get a good number of hours sleep, but still, it's not it's good to be as close to the other side of the clock of 12 o'clock as, as, as you can, you know, um, yeah. Bad habit. Sorry. Don't, okay. don't listen to me, guys. Bad, but my morning was. Habit. Sorry? Bad habit. Yes, it is. But um, I, I get so much done at night. A lot of my recording, a lot of those episodes, they're done like it's midnight, one o'clock in the morning. That's when they get recorded because that's when I feel the most at peace. It's not that I don't have peace, but it feels more peaceful around that time. And that's when I end up recording. But as far as the, the morning routine, I get up, I read. There are several apps on my phone that are um, devotional. So I, I listen to them. Some of them are audio. Some of them I read. And once I'm done with those, then I go out and take care. I, I'm a primary caregiver for my dad. So I get to him on the other side of the house, do all his vitals, give him his meds, prepare his breakfast, and then I get ready for work. And so the mornings are a little bit of a rush, but whatever happens, his stuff has to get done. I'm, I'm not leaving the house so he's taken care of. 
And so it's up to me to get up on time and get everything done. But that's that's those are my that's my basic morning. And my typical morning. I I want to say thank you to all the primary caregivers out there right now who are working from home slash mm -hmm. doing primary caregiving. I am my I myself require care. So Sabilla, I know how hard it is to be working from home and mm -hmm. doing primary care work. I'm on the other side of it. I although I was a primary caregiver for nine days. And I um I got so I had deeper appreciation when I became a semi primary caregiver. Um, I had deep appreciation for what primary caregivers do mm -hmm. because when I became one, I didn't know how emotionally exhausting it was slash tough, jeez. And so I only, I only had to do it for a short stint of nine days, but gee, peace, I had one a lot. <laughs> and so, um... And so for those of you who are on primary caregiving duty in the midst of the coronavirus, uh. walk because I know <laughs> how difficult it is. Yeah, cleaning off the bags, cleaning off the groceries before you come in the house. Yeah, that's my life right now. Yeah, yeah, to make sure that um, we, we stay safe as... As I told you guys, I learned, I knew what I was flying home to. I but I did not know that the CDC was going to put me on the list of high risk. And lovely, and that's the one I never want to learn about again. So I I appreciate all the work that the primary caregivers are doing, whether it's certified CNAs, whether it's aides coming into the house, whether it's um, caregivers who are living in the house, whether mm -hmm. it's um, everyone else, and including the doctors and nurses. In fact, I shared a video um, based off of politics now of a nurse who's bursting tears and she got on camera and said, I'm so drained, I'm so tired, I'm so tired of coming, giving the families bad news about coronavirus. And she was in New York, New York is the epicenter right now. And she goes, well, if people start laughing at me, I don't care. So, uh, for those of you that follow me on Facebook, I actually shared it on my Facebook page. Go look at that video, and you'll see this nurse, like, sobbing because she's, like, we're humans, we're stressed out, people need to give us a break, and uh, people need to give those primary care caregivers a break too i mean uh, yes yes yeah. so i understand where you're coming from Sevilla. so Sevilla, do you have any questions for me as we wrap this interview up well i know that um you answered one of the questions when you talked about why and when um you started podcasting so Kudos to you, too, for doing the search and then filling the niche. And I think, and I'm not trying to, you know, put, our, put us on a pedestal, but I think those of us who set out to fill a need and fill a niche, I think those are service people. We were created with a servant's heart, and we are serving our fellow man in our individual niches. So kudos to you and everyone out there who serves because, it, it takes a special heart to serve. And um, I belong to a group on Facebook of women who are caregivers. They work and they are caregivers for, usually it's a parent, but sometimes it's another family member. And um, they 
it's a servant's heart. That's all I can say. And so I can tell that you have the servant's heart as well. And so that it's it's a humbling lifestyle. It's a humbling experience. And there are going to be people who don't get it. And people have told me lovingly that I've wasted my life, that I, I'm, you know, by the time I'm finished being a caregiver, because I was a caregiver for my mom as well, but she passed. Uh, may will be a year, and uh, I've been told that I'm wasting my life and that um, it's it's not a good idea that I should try to go and take care of myself financially wise, et cetera, before it's too late. And uh, I know people mean well, but when you have a servant's heart, I think you also believe that everything's going to work out just as it should. And I can tell by speaking with you that that's who you are as well. I can already tell that. So to answer your question, I, I feel like you've already answered one, why you started when you started. Um, do you have, my other, I guess a question then would be, do you, have, uh, do you have any moments when you feel like throwing in the towel like the rest of us podcasters? And what do you do about it? <laughs> do, I, do I have any moments um, when I feel like throwing in the towel? I, um, I had a moment um last week it had nothing to do with the podcast it had Mm -hmm. everything to do with i'm also obtaining a journalism degree and that's going to be transitioned into a psychology degree as soon as i get with my journalism degree but i had a moment last week where i sat in front of my computer and I just cried my eyes out. I'm like, mm. I'm done. I am done. I'm mm. done being um, trying to obtain this journalism degree. I'm done because um, I just felt like I am done. No one's respecting my work as mm. right now as a citizen journalist, soon to be a journalist. And so I just thought, I'm done. And so I I had the moment of throwing in the towel. Since then, I'm perfectly fine. I'm back at it. But um, <laughs> that was a sobering experience, sitting in front of my community in my office, bawling because, um, of, because I thought that I was done. I mean, I almost... I almost said I'm done with podcasting because then I thought, okay, when you're not done with podcasting, people need you, number one. And two, um, you have already been christened by someone that knows you really well as a motivational speaker. And if you turn to her and say, I'm done. What is she gonna think? What is she gonna think? Because she's um and this was a really good friend of mine who happened to work in the aid capacity at me with me at one point. Um and so I think that there are days I wanna throw in a towel, but they're not there are days that I love my work and I love what I'm doing and I love helping others. And Mm -hmm. I, unfortunately, due to everything that's going on, I unfortunately got laid off. I'm in the middle of transferring jobs right now. Mm -hmm. I am applying for a job, hopefully that works out but if it doesn't i have a backup plan so that um the servant thought won't get ahead of me the financially end of it will be stabilized but i agree that the servant thought gets ahead of us because we want to impact millions of people and youtube is not cutting it i mean YouTube is slowing down their bit rates 
right now and that's why i haven't posted on youtube because i feel like um i can impact people with my voice more than i can impact people by youtube because people are using youtube just as much as podcasting right now to gain hope and i'm trying not to talk about what's going on I'm trying to be, I got this from a YouTuber, believe it or not. I, the YouTuber said, we know what's going on, but we are not trying to talk about, we're trying to bring you guys home. And this was a, um, a family out of Jacksonville, Florida, um, their YouTube channel. They also have a podcast. The YouTube channel is Fathering Autism, and they have a 14-year-old nonverbal autistic girl, which their primary caregivers do. And they said, um, the first video I watched, they said, we all know what's going on, and we just want to bring you guys hope, and our hope is not to talk about what's going on. So I took that and turned it into a podcast saying I like, well, that's a good way to put it because people are not looking at me towards the um, news. People are looking at me for help. And mm-hmm. as a friend of mine know that I'm becoming a journalist and they go, you must be itching to write about the coronavirus and you must be itching to write about this world pandemic and make yourself famous from a disabled one deal. I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> because I feel that um, I feel that we need to bring people hope and we need mm-hmm. to have them stay away from the news meeting. Yeah, that news could, that can raise your blood pressure. Yep, that can raise blood pressure, and we need, we, you and I, and all the other inspirational podcasters need to stay away from the news, need to stay away from everything that's going on right now, and just bring people hope. Yeah, agreed. So, Sabrina, where can people find you, and where could people get a hold of you if they choose to do so well i uh my website the child was not by choice podcast uh or website is www.childlessnotbychoice.net and um somebody got the got the dot com before i could get it so it's childlessnotbychoice.net of course, of course yeah course it was, it was interesting <laughs> yeah and then um i also have the civillamorgan.com website and uh, so i have those two sites and you can also just do a search for me. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook group just for women. It's um, the Child is Not by Choice Facebook group with Sabella Morgan. And then there's also a supporters group, Child is Not by Choice Supporters. That group is for anyone, men, women, childless or not. But the, the first one I mentioned is for women only who never had children. And there's also a, um, a, a page. I have a Facebook page. So I can be found anywhere. I'm on Instagram, at Joy and Relevance. I have two other Instagram pages, but the one pertaining to the podcast is at Joy and Relevance. I'm on Twitter, at Savella One, and I'm on LinkedIn, Savella Morgan. And some some of them have my MSM. It's just my master's degree, but this, it's still me. I mean, how many Savillas do we know? <laughs> so no, no, it's no, probably many. me. Not really many. And then um, I just wanted to tell you guys that Google finally, 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 after years upon years of every podcast on the planet fighting with Google, Google finally smartened up and gave us a iOS app. So you can find Child is Not by Choice in Google now. And ask when in Google now, because awesome. Google finally smartened up and gave us iOS app. I'm so happy. 
I, I am so happy because at one point I was um, trying to figure out the Android side and I'm like, how the heck am I mm-hmm. going to do it? I literally took people's phones and said, here, subscribe to Stitcher and I gave them Stitcher. But now since Google has um, gotten into the game, mm-hmm. that makes it easier on all of us. So for those of you that use Google Pixels, um, and for those of you on the invite side, you are good as gold because <laughs> you can subscribe to Trial Us Not By Choice, Ask When or any podcast you choose to subscribe to now in Google. Awesome. Finally. <laughs> finally, Sabilla says, finally, Sabilla and I have been fighting this, you guys, for almost 10 years because um, the elephant in the room has always been apple, 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 apple. Mm-hmm. Like, oi, eh, oi, I got, it's so funny, you guys, I was on a podcast the other day and I was being interviewed and I got mad at the um, interview. I said, well, why are you handing me the Apple link when when I don't even use Apple? She goes, well, half my audience is an Apple. I'm like, yeah, well, you should be everywhere. And she goes, Mm -hmm. I am. I'm on. She's using Anchor, which is not good thing and i'm like yeah well hand your android audience something that they can listen to too so sevilla and i have been fighting this fight with google for years and so i just want to tell you guys that apple google finally is in competition with apple podcast that they now have an app on the ios side and and that speaking of that, that means that yes, the, the podcast can be found on Google, as Wynn says. It's also um, on the Google app, but it's also on Apple. Everybody pretty much has to go through Apple. They should, is what we we are told. And yeah. uh, also um, Spotify, um, any any place that you can think of that you listen to, TuneIn Radio, um, Pandora. The podcast is everywhere. Pretty yep. Much. The podcast is everywhere. So if you guys mm-hmm. subscribe to this one, ask when you pretty much know how to subscribe to Trial It's Not by Choice. And I thank you guys for tuning in and listening to Sabilla's story. And you guys should go over to Sabilla's podcast and listen to it. It's one of my all time favorites I need to get back up and listen to you you. and I appreciate you guys for tuning in and supporting this podcast download numbers and financially and all that good stuff and you guys can find me all over the place and I will catch you next time you guys thanks you guys bye you just listened to Ask Win the podcast. To become a guest in the show, visit our website at askwin.weebly.com or call 816-591-3399. Just look for Danielle. Connect with Win on Twitter at Win Kelly Charles and like our Facebook page at Butterflies of Wisdom. You can also purchase Win's book through amazon.com or get a copy of the audiobook through Audible. Ask Win the podcast. Thank you.